Hi guys. Hoo hoo. Guess what? I realised this morning that I'd actually made a mistake. Well, not so much a mistake, but more of a critical omission for you chaps. Yes. And hmm, it's a little bit of an oddball one, but I can't believe I've made this oversight. Yeah. Here we've got a picture of a, a small skipper butterfly sitting on a grass seed head and he's looking all lovely apart from of course Lightroom's insidious background adjustments and of course we all know don't we that we can come over here and use the process version swap preset and now it's made the image go all wishy-washy and uh, rather unappealing and Sometimes it will have a greater effect on your image than others. It all depends on how much light and how much contrast you've got in your original image when you bring it into Lightroom. So obviously with this image, we need to brighten it back up again. And we need to put the contrast back. Um, because, you know, it just looks a lot better. We might even want to put the blacks back where we found them. Because if we look at the histogram, um, the blacks are reaching right down into the very darkish tones. So you might want to put it back up a little bit and just give a little gap there. See, we've still got a bit of a blue line there. So it could still be clipping in the actual blue channel somewhere. So we could actually just put them back a little bit further. And there we go, we've got a little tiny gap right at the very, very end. And you can see the red channels poking out towards the highlights. But that's not the little tip. The little tip is this. The critical thing about doing the process version swap to get contrast under control is actually this little subtle S-shaped tone curve. Please note we're in the tone curve which is here on this white circle we're not well we mustn't confuse that with the parametric curve as uh, somebody did who was watching my youtube channel and made a comment that it was the process version swap wasn't making any difference because he was looking at the parametric curve not the point curve so point curve we've this is the critical adjustment this is more critical than anything else. Now, when you apply that, underneath where it says point curve, colon, you, most likely on your computer, inside your version of Lightroom, says custom. Now, we've had to do quite a little bit of um, button clicking and slider adjustment to get here. And, you know, I mean, we've corrected some things that the process version swap does to the image. Because at the end of the day, you process an image by sight, not by the numbers. But the critical thing here is this curve. So here's the useful tip, the omission that I've constantly over the years forgotten to tell you about. When you see me do this in videos, and you can check through the videos and go way, way back, you'll notice mine never says custom. It says PV swap. And here's how you can get yours to say PV swap. And you can go and load this curve up without actually having to go and activate the preset or do anything up here. If yours says custom, just come to this little up and down arrow here. Left click and click save. And when you click save, the curves for camera raw or the curves folder for camera raw because don't forget lightroom uses all the camera raw settings and um, that will appear and all we need to do uh, i will just call this p v swap and i'll click save and so fundamentally if i right click go settings reset instead of having to come over to process version swap plus sharp and then go and neutralize the sliders all i actually need to do is to go and select 
PV swap because any custom curve that you save in that camera or curves folder will automatically appear inside the curve settings window below this line here. So this is where all your custom curves are. And so all we need to do is activate that. And there we go. We're back to where we started, apart from the fact we haven't got a little blacks adjustment, so we might just dial that back in. But it's just a little time-saving tip. And uh, I can't believe I've not shown you guys that before. So there you go. Yeah, Andy made an omission, which Andy has now corrected. Okay, guys, hope that proves useful to you in your future workflow. And uh, until the next time, I'll speak to you soon. Toot root.